Hi ladies. Hi gents. Palm Springs Cindy here. I'm going to turn this off. I meant to do that already. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm coming to you sort of late um, because I have not been on for a few days. So I did want to check in with everybody. I'm kind of tired. My face is sort of puffy and sleepy looking. But if you'll excuse that, I would so appreciate it. Okay, you guys, I, um, I did want to come on tonight with, um, you know, just sort of to say hello. And I do have some things that I want to share with you, some things that I'm just loving. And then I have a fun factoid for you. And I wanted to, I'm not sure if I took you into my guest room to show you my new lamps and my new end tables. So I'm going to do that as well. My, my computer was on sleep, but it just came off. It, <laughs> it just woke up. Oh my gosh, that's what I need to do. Okay, so I um, the last time I came to you, it was Easter, and I was at Newport Beach with my family, and uh, I interviewed my mom, and so that was really great to have her. And uh, today, actually, what is today? Tomorrow is her 93rd birthday, April 9th. So happy, happy birthday a day early, Mom. Um, okay, to start with, I uh, just wanted to say hello. <laughs> I did have this whole video idea planned because I was gifted this um, whole set of, I'm going to call them like prosthetics for the face. And um, I've been playing around with them, but I'm not really, I don't really understand exactly how they work well enough to do a video on them yet. So I, I had everything out, laid out. I was reading the directions. I was, you know, I was unpackaging things, but it just, it, I thought, oh, forget it. I'm too tired. It's not going to work for tonight's video. So anyway, I thought I do have just some fun things, you know, things that I use things that I rely on, things that I know work for me that I want to share with you, things that I'm loving. Okay, one thing that I love. Now, I am not a perfume person. I am not a fragrance person, mostly because it can irritate me if the fragrance is too strong or also because I use hairspray and hairspray has its own subtle scent. And I also use, um, you know, soap. And soap has its own subtle scent as well. <laughs> and so I'm not a real big perfume person. However, the caveat to that is I do, um, there is one fragrance that I am crazy about. And it's like, and I have it here. Chanel number five. You can see I've used a, quite a bit of it. And oh, it looks like my bottle's cracked. Oh no, that's the little, uh, that's the little perfume uh, put her on her. So uh, I bought this a while ago and it's the real deal. I, it was like a little treat for myself because I, I think usually if, I, if I'm with someone or I, I get a whiff of a fragrance that I really like, then I, I like, I track it down. I'll like say, oh, what, what fragrance are you wearing? Anyway, that's how I discovered this Chanel number no. five. So on a special occasion or when I want to just, you know, have a little something extra, I will use this perfume. Really nothing else. Um, no other perfume am I crazy about. So this is... This is something I'm loving. <laughs> Another thing that I'm loving is this Estee Lauder mascara. It seems to, it really does lengthen and thicken. My eyes tend to be very sensitive to makeup and fragrances, dyes, um, colored dyes in makeup. And so Estee Lauder, I'm safe with. So this is a very good, let me see if there's a certain name to this this particular tube, Sumptuous Extreme. And I have actually bought this twice now. So I do, this is something I'm loving. 
Something else that I love and I have loved for a long time, and you kind of already know this about me, I love handmade soaps. Now this soap I got when I was in Idlewild and it's made with honey. I don't know if you can see the little beehive stamping on there, but it's still packaged and I can't wait to use it. I usually buy anything lavender, but I, when I was up there in Idlewild, evidently their big deal, their big thing is honey. So I, I bought this bar of soap. Now, one thing that's a drawback about handmade soap is it's, it's like so pure that it doesn't last long. And that's okay with me because I just think it's, I love it. And I have trouble, um, if the bar of soap is too thick, it's hard to maneuver. So sometimes, like this, this was probably the thinnest bar of soap that I could get my hands on. So um, that's the only thing I look for when I do purchase a bar of soap that's handmade. I try to make sure it's not too thick this way because it's too hard to, to manhandle, <laughs> woman handle. <laughs> okay, something else I just discovered that I am loving. I get this little patch right in here, like where it starts itching. And uh, like usually in the middle of the night or right when I'm trying to go to sleep, it starts starts irritating me. And I will, um, you know, I will put the cord cortisone cream on it, that Cordaid, but I, I recently found this and I like it better than Cordaid. And it's just the cream Benadryl. It is soothing. This is the extra strength and it says itch stopping cream and it does. So it probably isn't healing like the Cordaid cream is, but it does stop the itching and it immediately. No fragrance, I really like it. I'm in love with it. <laughs> Something else that I'm loving, speaking of fragrance, is anything, like I said earlier, lavender. And I do put this in my um, f uh, my fusing uh, pot at night. It just smells so good. And I actually do use this for a little bit of fragrance. I'll put some on, on my wrists, but it doesn't last, it doesn't stay very long. It kind of evaporates in the air. So the perfume really does stay longer. But I just love the, the fragrance of lavender. It's pure, it's natural, and mm, I just love the smell. You know, Frank Sinatra was a lavender fragrance person. Another thing I'm loving is, <laughs> you'll know when I show this to you, I have so many of these and they're all pretty much the same color. I love this lipstick, this brand of lipstick. And this is what I have on right now. And then I might wear this one, these two more at night. Let's see if I can find, if give you the specifics on this. That it's Maybelline and it's Superstay Matte Ink. That's the brand that you want to look for. And it does stay and it is super. <laughs> and it, um, I'm going to put some of this medium color on. I think this is the medium. No, this is the dark. Okay, I'm going to put, let's see. I'm going to put uh, uh, this one on. It's very matte, but it does stay. Now, because I had my teeth whitened, I don't want to get this on my teeth. You know, I had them zoom whitened not even a week ago probably. So I'm still trying to be really careful. I just bought a big basket of blueberries, fresh blueberries, so I can't, I can't eat those. Okay, another thing that I'm loving, um, this, anything that's this pot or this gel eyeliner, I like this better than the, um, than the liquid eyeliner. I like it better than powder eyeliner. I like it better than pencil eyeliner. It just, it's easier to go on and it stays on. It works better for me. And I love, I love this little tiny brush. So accurate and I did just get some of that on my hand. So this is, this is all over the counter. This is Maybelline Lastic Drama. 
And if it is, um, let's see what color I can find. I can't find the color on it. It's worn off. I'm sure it's black. So I love this and it lasts a long time. In fact, I end up throwing it away because it just gets so dried out that I need something a little fresher. I end up throwing it away before it's actually hit bottom, hit pan. So I, I'm loving that gel eyeliner with a nice fine brush. Something else that I'm loving is I rediscovered this and now that it's getting warmer, and um, I'm going to be getting, you know, my skin's going to be getting a little bit darker from just the sun. Is this, um, it's L'Oreal, um, let's see, uh, Lumi, Lumi Glotion. And I mix this with my foundation. And it just, um, you know, I noticed that the found, it, it um, takes the foundation down a notch. It acts as a lotion to my face and it also gives me a little bit of um like a little healthy glow which i love so i'm loving this and i've like i said i've rediscovered this since uh it's been it's been warmer outside i would recommend this and the last thing that i'm loving uh before i get into my factoid for this evening which is such a good one the last thing that I'm loving is, you know, I, I recently have been, have spent close to $13,000 at the dentist, endodontist, dentist. And so my last visit, I had my teeth all cleaned and, um, and then they finished with the implants and everything. Oh, thank goodness. So uh, anyway, I'm loving this mouthwash. And I don't, this, this is the flavor. It's, it says mild mint. And this is the flavor that I like. It is truly mild. There is no aftertaste. And yet, um, it's not sweet. It doesn't taste like alcohol. It's not harsh. It, frankly, it tastes a little bit just like water. But I really like this. And it seems to purify, you know, take away any residue from toothpaste or baking soda. I'm sorry, baking powder that I use for brushing my teeth. So, okay, those are some things that I'm loving. And I want to share um, a factoid with you. I have my notes right here. Okay, year, the, the story, the backstory behind this factoid is years and years ago when I was teaching, every year at the beginning of the year, the I'll say the opening, the kickoff day, that the district would put on a um, like a, a big, uh, uh, well, a kickoff day. And they would introduce the new board members. They would hand out the um, any awards that needed to be handed out to schools that had won certain, uh, like maybe they had perfect uh, or had the highest attendance or highest test scores or whatever. So... Also, uh, during that afternoon, you know, they always provided donuts and coffee, and then it was it was very it was nice. The teachers, you know, all had to come, and then we had our donuts and coffee, and we got to see each other from a summer where, you know, we it was like our first day of, of real school back to school, and then after the afternoon was over that the district provided, then we went and we had like a lunch hour, and then we went to our school sites. Okay. So, so during this first day kickoff, the district also would provide a speaker of some kind, some out, outhouse speaker. And so one year the speaker, <laughs> I don't remember who it was, I, the only thing I really remember is what I'm gonna share with you tonight. And that is, um, he, it was a man, and he talked about, this is what he said that stuck with me. He said that, that, okay, I, I want to I make sure I get this across to you the, the correct way. And I'm going to start it like this. Um, what do Roman chariots have to do with our roads today? Okay. Evidently, the Roman war chariots, now you know how long ago that was. 
the Romans were the ones that, you know, that's saying all roads lead to Rome because Rome was such a vast empire and they built roads. They were the, like one of the first civilizations to build really advanced cobblestone roads. Well, the, the war, their war chariots through the years and years and years dug ruts in the road where the wheels had come and gone, come and gone. There, were, they, there, there began rut imprints on the roads. So, um, because that was, that was, you know, the, the, the spacing of the chariot wheels. Okay, so then when it came to building roads, when it came to building wagons, when it came to America building railroads, the gauge of the railroad is four feet, eight and a half inches. Now, a lot of our roads, a lot of what rides on the railroad, travels on the railroad, is measured to meet four feet, eight and a half inches because that was the spacing of the Roman war chariots wheels. So the Roman war, ch the Roman war chariots wheels have determined the size of our railroad. Okay, now there's more to this. Um, Okay, it says that uh, it says that the chariots were made to be okay. Now here's the kicker: the chariots were made, the width of the wheels were made to be just wide enough to fit two horses' bums, two horses' asses. So the so two horses' butts, and then the chariot wheels. Okay, now here's an extension to that. That um, from the Roman war chariots to today's um, space shuttle, that that today's space shuttle on the when it's on the launching pad, you're going to notice on either side of the space shuttle there are two solid rocket boosters, solid rocket booster, solid rocket booster, shuttle in the middle. Now the so two solid rocket boosters, the people, the engineers who made those wanted those to be bigger, but they couldn't be any bigger because if they were any bigger, they wouldn't fit on the railroad, on the train, and they wouldn't fit under the bridges that it took for them to get to Cape Canaveral. So from, so from Roman chariots to railroads to space shuttles, all of those gauges, all of those dimensions are based on the size of the Roman war chariots. I just think that is so fascinating. Four feet, eight and a half inches wide. So if, um, if you are ever uh, in, a, in a place where you're, uh, need to make conversation or need to share some knowledge with a friend or a partner, a loved one, a child, you can say, you can explain the story of, of, the, um, of how America, how cars, um, how covered wagons, how, um, how things that travel on the railroad got to be the size and the dimensions that they are today because of four feet, eight inches being the size of two horses' asses side by side. And, uh, and that's what the chariots used to be pulled. So there you go. Okay, you guys, with that crazy thought in mind, I am going to say goodbye. And um, I, know it's, I know it's late, and probably most of you will see this video tomorrow, but I'm certainly gonna get, I, oh, you guys, you know what I did tonight before I made this video? It was so wonderful. How long has it been since you have taken a really warm, soapy, bubbly bubble bath? Oh my gosh, I got, I took a bubble bath tonight and it, I just soaked and I lit a candle 
and I, it was just so wonderful. It was soothing, it was relaxing, it was, it was, oh, and I had music playing. It was really nice. So maybe uh, if you're not quite sure what to do after we hang up, you might want to go in and take a bubble bath. I think you're going to enjoy it. P.S. I love you. Mwah. Until our next conversation.